This is Johnny Olson speaking for Max Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. The program is edited for broadcast. has a money stake in one of our famous couples. Rooting section number one has its money on Gavin McLeod and his wife, Patty. Rooting section number two backs Alan Lutton and his wife, Betty White. Rooting section number three is betting on Pat Harrington and his wife, Marjorie. And we play the game of celebrity gossip, Tattletales. And here's the star of Tattletales, Bert Coffey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Are you get? No, no, you just leave her alone, Alan. She's all right. She's terrific, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Tattle Tales. Our audience is here, it's divided into three sections, going to root for each one of our celebrity couples. And uh, our celebrity couples are all dressed terrifically today, um, uh, with one notable exception, perhaps. Uh, Pat, I didn't think you were. Uh, didn't think you were going to wear those check pants today. Uh -huh! Blows a line. How come you wear those line, pants today? I, I didn't think you were going to wear those pants today. I didn't think you were going to wear those pants today. Why? Did you think they were checked? Good night, <laughs> folks. That's all. <laughs> we were set for a week. Ladies, will you sit out here in front and you get in the back? And we'll start the first round of battle tips in just a minute. <laughs> Join me, Bob Eubanks, for Newlywed Game episodes not seen for nearly 20 years. Just wait till we get home. <laughs> Every day at 3 on Buzzer. We are back. Uh, I have something I want you to see today. Will you come with me? We have a, we have a cameraman named Curly. Now, he is, he is in an outfit today that you have to see. First of all, we're very proud. We got our new Tattletail jackets today. Curly, would you show him, show him the, your jacket there? Isn't that nice? And, uh, Curly just... Um, Curly really looks terrific today, and, but I wonder, Curly, if you'd show them why they call you Curly. Do you think you could bring yourself to do that? You don't want to do that, huh? Okay, it's been wonderful talking to you because we just... <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> what a terrible thing to do. Now I'm going to take this off, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, how about the rest, folks? Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist. Huh? All right, now. It's you. We're going to start the next part of the show. You like it? Well, all right. I think I'm going to keep it on then. Let's meet our folks before we run out of time, shall we? First, we have Marge and her husband, Pat Harrington. Yes. Next to Marge and Pat is Betty White and her husband, Alan Ludden. Betty, What's going on out you there? are hosting. Uh, you are hosting the Patsy Awards tonight. Tonight, we yes, want everybody sir. to be sure and watch that. The yeah. best performing Pats. animal actors in the business. Yes, and, and Betty's going to be there show. too. Yeah. And next to Alan and Betty is Patty and Gavin McLeod. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we will be back to you in just a moment. Please hold tight, will you? Thank you. Okay, ladies, ready to go? Here is the first question coming up. Hey, you know what to do? <laughs> Press that button and my mustache is falling off. Here it is. First question. It happened at a movie. <laughs> Patty, you were first. Uh, you first, Patty. Well, Gavin uh, loves to go to the movies. Just loves it. And the minute he gets there and sits down, he goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't even know it because, but, but only when his neck goes so far back that, you know, it's in the, in the row in back of us, that's when I know. And uh, then we come out and we talk about the film and I talk about that wonderful scene and uh, he hasn't seen it. Doesn't, he misses the whole thing. He misses the, the whole, whole thing. thing. So then we need a one or two word clue, which would probably be. That's good. Sleep, Sleeps. huh? Uh -huh. One word clue worth $100 to, watch, we'll, we'll come up on him and he'll be asleep. <laughs> All right, let's bring on the fellas. All right, gentlemen, we've asked the ladies a question. Sound that signal now when you recognize your wife from her clue. Here is the question first. It happened at a movie, and the clue is sleeps. <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Tell us about that, Gavin. I don't know. Ever since I turned vegetarian, I sleep in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> 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 I don't know what that has to do with it, but that's, that pays off. You're absolutely right. It just seems to coincide with each other. I see. All right. Thanks, fellas. We'll get back in a minute. Next question coming up, ladies. Ready to... I gotta take this silly thing off here. Ow. <laughs> okay, ready to go. Next question. Um, we'll just put it right here. Okay. Uh, next question. A really embarrassing moment. Mark. Embarrassing moment of our lives, I guess. Really? Pat, yes. Uh, Pat did a Broadway show in New York City, and it opened and closed in the same night. Uh -huh. And I was in the audience, and when I watched the critics walk out at intermission, I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, needed to say Pat called American Airlines during intermission, and we came home the next day <laughs> <laughs> after eight weeks of rehearsal in Philadelphia. It was really. Really humiliating and embarrassing. All that But work. it's happened to a lot of people. But me. that was his first experience. It's happened to me, I can tell you. So mm. anyway, So yes, we need a one um, or two word clue that Pat will uh, remember? Uh, oh, uh, a turkey, play. somebody said. I think play. <laughs> play? Yeah. Really embarrassing moment. you only did moment. one play, yeah. Play. Yeah. All right. We're I getting other so. offers back here, but you want to stick with no, play? No, I think play, because, okay. yeah. Let's bring on the fellas, shall we? Gentlemen, we have a question, and here it is. A really embarrassing moment. And the clue is... Play. Pat. <laughs> Tell us about that embarrassing moment, Pat. Well, I, I did a, uh, a play, barely, on Broadway uh, several years ago. Uh, this play, uh, you know how bad this play was, Bert? How bad was it, Pat? <laughs> this play was so bad that opening night during intermission, I called United Airlines. I told that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it again, Pat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, exactly what Marge, uh, that's exactly what Marge said about 15 seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> opened at 7.30 uh, in, in, in New York City, and I was home in bed in L.A. at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that play, Pat? You want me to... You, uh, <laughs> you don't want to mention it. I really would prefer not to mention oh, really? happiness. As a, uh, Some of the investors are still chasing you around, yeah, are they? Yes. All yes, right, thank yes. you very much, Pat. You're right. At this point... Uh, Betty and Allen have zero, but they'll score. Patty and Gavin and Marge and Pat are tied with $100 apiece. <laughs> All right, I mean, 
We're gonna do a title tale quickly now. And here it comes. Man, I'm gonna ask you this question. You know, don't give me the answer or anything until I ask for it. Here it is. Let's say you have a 13-year-old daughter and you find her reading a pornographic book. Would you take it away from her or let her read it? Hmm. You have a 13-year-old old daughter, let's say. You find her reading a pornographic book. Would you take it away from her or would you let her read it? Think about that one, gentlemen. It's rather provocative. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, Marge. Oh, I, oh, I'm first. You are first. Uh, well, we have a 13-year-old son who's read a few magazines. Uh, you might call them pornographic. No, I, I would let them read it because I don't think you should make a big issue out of it. I think that uh, if they grow up knowing about sex, which our children have, that it's just, uh, you know, it's just a matter of life. And if you make a big thing out of it, then they'll think there's really something wrong. Yes, but now the question is, how, how, uh, what, well, what would, would say, he do, you what, see? Would who do? Would, what would Pat do? Oh, he yeah. wouldn't, he would do this. He, he would, would just do the let same. him read it, yeah. Right, okay. He, yeah. So he'll say, uh, let her read it. Yeah, her, yes. Yeah, because we said yeah. hypothetically you had a 13-year-old yes. daughter. Aren't you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I have a, no, I have, my daughter's only eight, but yes, I would let her read it. Okay, Yes. let's bring them on. All right, Pat, each correct answer is worth $100 in our Tattletale Quickie. What would you do? I'd uh, let her read it. That's what Pat said exactly how I said that. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely right, Pat. Thank you very much. Okay, Betty, uh, how about Alan? Well, the, 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 he wouldn't, but the only reason he'd take it away is to read it himself. No, he really... Uh, he wouldn't take it away for, for a very, this very same valid reason. Why, why make such a, a timus out of it? No, I think he would very... He would let her read it, let too. Her read it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's bring on Alan. Alan. Yeah. What would you do? I'd let her read it. That's what she said. And you're right, Alan. May I just say one thing? To take it away from her would either heighten or lower, as the case may be, your interest in it. So I'd have to let her read it. Besides, right. you know how long it takes you to finish a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll tell you about it later. Hey, Bert, I got to thank you for one thing. What is that? Adam? I loved your promising that we will score before the night is over. Well, I knew you would. <laughs> 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 Moving right along, folks. Uh, thank you, Alan. <laughs> okay, Patty, how about Gavin? What would he do? <laughs> well, we have seven children between us, and I think that... Uh, he would let he would let his daughter read it if you he think so it, for the same reasons mm -hmm. okay let's see if Gavin agrees with you all right Gavin what would you do in that event well uh, it would all depend on how far she had read through the book I mean if she was near the last page why take it away <laughs> uh, I might take it away uh, read it myself and give it back to her uh, it's a tough question uh, it would depend on where my daughter was 13 <laughs> it really is a heavy question I think I think I would take it away then talk to her. Well, you had two choices, uh, Gavin, and, uh, and Patty picked the other one. That ain't it. She's that progressive. It. <laughs> I'm sorry, no score there. So, at this point, uh, we are at the halfway mark. Betty and Alan have $100, Patty and Gavin $100. Margie and Pat are in the lead with $200. Let's change places, you guys. Ladies in the rear, fellas, come on out in front. And while we're changing places, we'll break away for a message for you. Please come back. See you in a minute. Don't flip your lid. Buzzer's Big Wig Day Marathon returns after this. Stay tuned.
mark. Two, one. Yes, we're now back at the halfway mark. We have changed places, and our studio audience is guaranteed, by the way, everybody here going home with some money today. In addition to that, if they're in the rooting section backing our top winning couple today, we will add a bonus of $1,000 to what they already have. Are you making signals to the audience, Pat? No, I'm just talking to uh, several of the people in the Marjorie and Pat group. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, uh, what were you saying? You were saying something about uh, your... One uh, of the fellas thought this was denim. <clears throat> no, no, it's not denim. No. It's a rayon, isn't it? It's rayon, yeah. Rayon. No, it's suede, isn't it? Yes, it I is. I can suede. tell. Oh, you svelte fella, you. You're going to do the check suede? You, you're very <laughs> suede. No, <laughs> here we go. Let's see if, you're, if your ladies are backstage and ready to go. Did are they? Yes. Belt, belt. All set to go, ladies. Yes. You can hear me now, but in a minute you won't be able to. Back to solitary confinement you go. But, but. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. <laughs> but. But. Okay, but, fellas. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. Here goes. One question. Hands on the table. Keep your hands on the table, Mr. Lovey, sir, if you don't mind. <laughs> Got to watch him every minute. Oh, no, no. <laughs> First question, here it is. It happened while you were working. I feel so slow-witted with this man. He is fast, boy. Tell us about it, Gavin. But I missed on that porn porn pornography you'll get me every time. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, I did the musical A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, mm -hmm. and Patty was in that with me. And one particular afternoon, remember the big earthquake in 72? Well, uh, a school near us, a Catholic school, really was hit uh, hard. So they had a fundraising thing, uh, a fashion show, a fun fashion show with Tim Conway, Ted Knight, and myself. So we went there, and while we were getting into these uh, fashion clothes, we were snipping on the vodka, you know, and tonics and so forth. Little did I remember that I had, little did I forget, I, whatever I did, I forgot. <laughs> that I forgot that I had a performance that evening. And in the forum, I did pseudo listen that. If you know, we wear uh, Greek togas, you know, and little things around here with the um, things on that you take, like Caesar wore, you know? Uh, so this one night, I was wearing a gray wig uh, with the toga. Uh, this was right after coming from the uh, fundraiser. And all of a sudden, I started to sweat profusely. I mean, it was, and I had this rug on my head, the wig on my head. Keeping all of this <laughs> you know, uh, in, in, perspiration in Bel Air, sweat in Sherman Oaks, uh, keeping it in, and I, I just couldn't stand it anymore, and I had like three girls who were barely dressed working with me in this one particular scene, so I went up to take this, the wreath off my head. I took the wreath, and the wig came off with it, and it was like Hoover Dam erupting. <laughs> it went all over, all over the girls. One slipped and fell and looked, dislocated her hip. <laughs> it was a uh, big laugh. Terrible, terrible. That's what that happened happen. when we were working. Okay, so now we need a one or two word clue that Patty yeah. is going to recognize. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's all the time. She'll know uh, uh, wig. Wig will do it. Wig. It happened wig. while you were working, and wig is the cue. Yeah. And the clue. Uh, uh, whatever. Let's bring all the ladies. Okay, ladies, we have asked a question. We have a clue. Here is the question first. It happened while you were working. And the clue is wig. Hey. Tell us about that, Patty. Well, uh, Gavin and I were doing the, the first show we ever did together. A uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And he was playing Pseudolus. And uh, he decided one night to wear a wig. He didn't usually a gray wig, and he had an olive branch over that, and there came a point in the show where he um, had to take the olive branch off, and, and the wig came to, and he perspired so much. Thank that you, honey, for that. Yeah. What he said, you're absolutely right for $100. Thank you, Patty. Okay, ladies, uh, fellas, uh, next question coming up. The ladies are gone. Ready to go? Here it is. It happened in a bar. <laughs> happened in a bar. <laughs> We just made it. Tell us about that, Pat. Um, we, we were sitting uh, at a bar in Beverly Hills, and a very famous actor came in. And uh, he saw somebody at a booth <laughs> that he knew, another, another famous personality. And uh, I had about three or four drinks. I'd had about nine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, the fellow motioned him over. He went over to sit down, to sit down at the booth, but he didn't realize that there was no bench seat. And he sat and sat and sat and sat 
until finally only his head was like, like this. Yes. <laughs> he was doing Joel Kupperman. Again. Right. No, I said to my wife, I said, look, so-and-so just ordered John the Baptist. But... Uh, <laughs> that, I, I don't want to mention the fellow's name because he's a very famous actor. And she will. No, oh, God! <laughs> that's right. That'll be the first words out of her mouth. No, Remember no, no, the no, other no. story? Anyway, that's, that's the, uh, the Okay, so the, the famous fella came in and sat right now, down yeah, now. on his... Um, what we need now is a clue that... Benchless. Marge... Uh, Benchless. 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 Yeah, okay, okay. That's one word. Benchless is definitely one word, it's isn't one it? one word. Ask him. Ask him. He knows. He's the, he's the guy. There's a resident expert on words. Benchless. Okay, here we go. What's that? What's no... That? Actor, they say? Yeah. Actor, actor. Yeah. No, what? It happened at a point. They seem to be evenly divided, however. Somebody just said chinless. You want to go with benchless? You have to go. Yeah, benchless, benchless, benchless it is. Benchless. Let's bring on the ladies. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, ladies, we have another question, and this is it. It happened in a bar. And the clue is benchless. Mars! Tell us about it, if you will, dear. It's this story where, well, it was a bar restaurant. We were having dinner, and uh, I won't mention his name. Uh, a very big actor came in and sat down to talk to us, and there was no seat, and he just went right on the floor. That's what I'm telling you right. All right, at this point, Betty and Alan have $100. Patty and Gavin have $200. Marge and Pat are in the lead with $300. We will be back with more of Tattle Tales after a brief message for you. Please come back and see us. Welcome back to more hairdos and don'ts. Buzzard Big Wig Day returns. <laughs> okay, we are back to play a title tale. Quickie, good close game, too. Can you hear me, ladies? Yes, yes. I'm going to ask you this question now, and don't give me the answer until we ask for it. Here's the question. Ladies, you go to a health resort, and you have your choice of a massage by a man or a woman. Which one would you take? You go to a health resort, and you have your choice of a massage by a man or a woman. Which one would you take? Think about that. We shall return. Thank you. Uh, each correct answer is worth $100, gentlemen. Pat, what would you do? Uh, what would Marge do? I, I think Margie would, um, would take a massage uh, from a woman uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, I think she realizes that a woman's proficiency would be equal to a man's in that regard and her own innate modesty. Those are the two reasons. Well, if you want three or four, no, I No, no, two. Mm -hmm. Two will do fine, thank okay. you. You say she will choose the woman. She would choose Let's the woman. Let's bring on Marge. Marge, uh, who would you choose for that massage? Oh, I've never been to a massage parlor where there's a man massaging 
Uh, I know, I've never had a massage by a man. It might be interesting, but I think I'd have to pick the woman. That's what Pat said in the LA. <laughs> Absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Alan, how about Betty? Which of the two would she choose? She'd like neither, because she hates massages. I love them, she hates them. Well, nevertheless. But, but nevertheless, <laughs> she would no doubt pick the woman and then talk her out of it. She, <laughs> she would pick the woman? Monday. Yes. Okay, let's bring out Betty. <laughs> Excuse me, almost <laughs> choked on that one. Betty, which one would you choose, please, dear? Do you have another category? I hate to be massaged. I really don't, especially by just a good friend. But I tell you, I think I would prefer a woman. That's what Alan said. He also said you hate to be massaged. He's right all the way around. Thank you, Thank you Betty. OK, Gavin, how about uh, Patty? Uh, well, my wife is so sensual. I mean, the answer is uh, quite obvious. No, she's been to enough chiropractors, male chiropractors, that I know she's used to the male touch. So I think, and she prefers the male over the female in any kind of touching situation, so I think she'd prefer <laughs> the male. You'd say the man. The male. Let's bring on Patty and find out if she agrees with you. All right, Patty, which one of those two would you like to have massage you? Oh, I would take that big, strong man. <laughs> That's what he said. You're right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought she's got to take that big, strong woman. <laughs> okay, that means time is up already. Marge and Pat, you have won $400. We add $1,000 to that for a total for your rooting section of $1,400. And we will be back with more of Tattle Tales in just a moment. Okay, we are just about out of time for today. Today we gave away a total of $1,900. It was nice to have a couple of regulars from the Mary Tyler Moore Show with us, Betty White and Gavin McLeod. <laughs> nice to see you both. Nice to see all of you. Hope we see all of you next time on Tattle Tales. We will be giving away secrets and money to our studio audience. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. This is John Harlan speaking for Tattletales, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.